Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to my best chess games of all time series. So in this series we follow the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really an immortal chess game played by the legendary beast from Baku by the legendary Gary Kasparov. So the game was played in 1995, uh, Gary played here with the black pieces against Kirill Georgiev. Kirill Ge Georgiev also a respected grandmaster from Bul Bulgaria back, back in the 90s and uh, what the uh, good thing about this game was that Kirill Georgiev went into tactical battle against Gary Kasparov. Basically, uh, players in the 90s, uh, when uh, Gary Kasparov was, of course, the best player uh, in the world, uh, didn't dare to play uh, tactical games against Gary Kasparov because uh, Gary was so good in tactical calculations. Uh, uh, he was so well uh, well prepared in this Snyder defense, in this King's Indian uh, defense, in all of this tactical, tactical openings, and he really played some immortal queen sacrifices in many many of his games and today we'll have a, such a game with a beautiful queen sacrifice for the initiative by uh, by Gary Kasparov. Uh, the only player I think that had some success uh, in tactical battles against Gary Kasparov was Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, Anatoly Karpov on the other hand had also some uh, great games against Gary Kasparov but into in he went into these positional battles which maybe Gary Kasparov didn't like when you go uh, and play Tactical, uh, tactical battles against Gary, you get smashed, like here uh, Kirill Georgiev in a very, very beautiful uh, neither of defense game. So, uh, let's see the game. Uh, we have e4 played by uh, Georgiev, c5 by Gary, knight to f3, d6, uh, d4, uh, c takes d4, knight takes d4, now we have knight to f6, knight to c3, and now a6, the preparation of the neither uh, We can try maybe e6, the shamaning system, or this common neither with the move e5. Uh, here, uh, Bishop to e3, uh, played by Georgiev. Now we have e5, and after knight to b3, of course you have some choices. You can go, uh, uh, you could, you could have gone here also on e2 or on f3. But knight to b3, a common idea of the knight of and. Uh, there is uh, one problem always about the Nidor from Black's perspective. You have the d5 weakness, you have the d6 weakness, but it's not so easy to attack these weaknesses. You could try maybe knight, knight outpost on d5, but after uh, knight takes d5 and e takes d5, uh, Black has then a pawn majority uh, on the king side, so that's also one of the main ideas of the Nidor. And the problem is you cannot attack uh, this weakness on d6 with the move knight to b5 because this a6 is this preparation of blacks to restrict this uh, knight's ability to play so um this setup of blacks is the so-called boleslavsky hole setup uh magnus carlson places now plays this now very often in the sveshnik of sicilian and uh, you see how uh, even great players struggle against this setup it seems that black has several weakness but it's really, really hard to occupy them so uh, in the game bishop to e6 played by Kasparov, uh, here we have f3, a common idea with the immediate preparation to play the move g4, h4, then simply expand on the uh, king side, uh, trying to get a uh, sort of a pawn majority attack here uh, with maybe even g6, h6, if for instance black's castles, then it could be really dangerous, and now uh, white has also a good position, queen to d2, then queen, si queen side castling is the possibility going into a fast attack on the king side, so after bishop to e7, we have this move queen d2, knight uh, from b to d7, and now g4. You see, Georgiev goes immediately in the attack. Uh, the natural way is to proceed here with the move uh, queenside castling. Uh, g4 immediately is also a good idea uh, now. Uh, black has to do something. If you castle, for instance, immediately, then g5 is a possibility, kicking away the knight and maybe uh, try uh, to expand on the on the. Uh, on the king side, so uh, that's why here Gary played first the move h6, uh, challenging white to uh, expand on the king side even further with the move h4. Uh, here we have b5. You see, Gary is also playing uh, queen side attack, waiting white to castle on the queen side. Now, black has also some several possibilities here uh, to attack uh, white's knight and uh, maybe expand on the uh, on the queen side with the move a5 a4 because these knights uh, are of course good defensive pieces but they could be also an object uh, object of black's attack uh, if you castle queen side immediately that 
that's why rook to g1 was played in here uh, god is uh, played knight to b6 preparing uh, uh, all, uh i mean uh, liberating a square for this knight for instance if this g5 like in the game was played after g5 we have this square uh, knight to d7 now for the knight uh, again it's uh, the position is glued together the pieces are compact here of blacks and uh, taking out uh, the pawn is not such a good idea uh, here of white because you get bishop to h4 uh, after bishop to uh, to f2 bishop takes queen takes f2 but now g6 is a good choice i think for black because this h6 is advanced but it's always an object of uh, of uh, black's attack it can be taken after a couple of moves for instance if you try here queenside castling at attacking this d6 weakness then i think we can try b4 attacking the knight after knight to d5 we can take knight takes d5 e takes d5 and now bishop to f5 i think solves all of the problems of blacks here we have a weakness uh, this h6 we can also expand here on the queen side with the move a5 a4 simply kicking away the knight then after that maybe occupy this very very nice square for the for the knight this uh, square c5 so you see this knight is endangered here still we have possibilities to play something like rook to c8 and then attack this c2 weakness so you see black has a more flexible game i think in this particular position so that's why taking out uh, the spawn is not such a good idea so instead of this uh, g takes h6 idea here uh, knight to d5 uh, uh, was played uh, here by Gergiev. he didn't uh, take out the pawn and here gary kasparov simply took bishop takes e6 we have uh, Oh, pardon me bishop takes uh, d5 after uh, e takes d5 we have now finally h takes g5 h takes g5 and now uh, rook to c8 and uh, this is a uh, common idea um, in the Nidorf to get uh, use of this uh, semi-open c file but uh, there is one problem for both sides both of these kings are in the center so you see um, uh, black and white expanded on the queen side and on the king side here with the pawn moves uh, waited uh, their opponents to castle into the, into the attack but both players stayed with the king in the center and then we'll have of course a great great tactical battle because here uh, Georgiev played the move knight to a5 and this game becomes now really critical this is now a challenging move by Georgiev uh, of course the idea is to play the move knight to c6 uh, it occupying this very very nice square for uh, for the knight and basically uh, Gary Kasparov has to go into a tactical battle with the move knight to d5 it seems now that Gergiev may, has made maybe a mistake because after uh, if for instance take then Gary Kasparov uh, will take of course this knight on on uh, on uh, a5 and will have a, a better position I think uh, with the uh, with one pawn up with the pawn central control but in the game a knight to b7 was played by Georgiev attacking the queen and there is now this choice maybe to go knight to c7 here by um, Kasparov and this was I think a great uh, preparation here of uh, Georgiev's because he play uh, he probably calculated this particular line uh, after queen takes d5 rook to b8 can be played uh, there's no way that uh, uh, white will hang on to this knight but that's not the point here uh, white cannot continue the game with one piece up but the problem is here the move g6 for black after something like uh, f takes g6 we have queen to e6 and basically you're forced to play the move knight to f8 challenging the queen but now after knight to d6 queen takes d6 uh, queen takes d6 bishop takes d6 and here maybe rook to g4 solves i think all of the positional problems that white has here white is simply better here although um, black is a pawn up but with the bishop pair uh, these are really this very very annoying pawn islands these are really an object of uh, of the attack of white we could try maybe here a4 uh, attacking here this uh, pawn uh, pawn structure we can attack here this weakness uh, this weak pawn on uh, g6 it's also here a weak g6 g7 pawn so uh, i think white has a comfortable game if even queenside castling then after that is here the possibility attacking the bishop so i think this could be really completely winning endgame here for for white so that's why uh gary kasparov after the move um uh, knight to b7 he didn't uh, uh care for his queen he played the move knight to e3 sacrificing the queen you see um he calculated all of this uh, very very good i think after knight takes d8 we have uh, knight takes c2 
uh, attacking uh, the king and the rook, pulling sort of a fork after king to d1, we have knight takes uh, a1. And uh, here knight to b7 was played by Georgiev, which wasn't a good move, I think. Uh, a better idea is to play maybe knight to f7, because you lose the knight anyway. After king takes f7, we have queen to d5. This would be a possible continuation after something like uh, king to e8 we have bishop to d3 and uh, here Kari Kasparov has to go maybe here to d8 still everything is compact but now uh, after queen to b7 maybe uh, rook to uh, h2 is the possibility getting this uh, knight somehow uh, in uh, because your knight is still endangered if you lose the knight then of course white has a completely winning endgame but uh, with this move rook to h2 uh, it's playable i think for both sides but in the game um, georgiev played the move uh, knight to b6 um, uh, pardon me knight to b7 here uh, getting this knight out of the game trying maybe to go knight to a5 getting uh, uh, staying with this knight on the board and here kasparov played simply the move knight to c2 uh, getting also his knight out and here g6 played by Georgiev. and here kasparov makes a mistake i think uh, he took um, he played the move knight to d4 allowed uh, here um, Georgiev to take out the pawn on f7 a better idea i think is to continue with the move f5 uh, if for instance knight to d6 is played then we can simply take uh, king uh, bishop takes d6 after queen takes d6 now rook to h2 it's a very nice move i think you could try maybe queen to e6 attacking the the king that's not a problem but now king to d8 and now queen to b8 is with the check it's not a problem we can hide again with their king on c7 if you, for instance, take out this pawn, then knight to e3 is very, very dangerous. If you go with your king on c1, then we have king to d6. And after something like king to b1, here rook to c2. And I think it's game over here for, for um, white. You cannot defend this pawn anymore. This is a huge, huge activity uh, with these three pieces here. The knight, you see how the knight is a good defender uh, in front of the queen. Uh, there are no checks now possible uh, here by um by georgiev so in uh, as said after the move uh, g6 kasparov made sli a slight inaccuracy i think he played the move knight to d4 and this allowed now um, georgiev um, to go back into the game i think after f takes uh, g takes f7 we have king takes f7 and now bishop to d3 preparing uh, a very annoying check here on g6 uh, in the game g5 was played we have a queen to g2 and now a knight to f6 here uh, garik plays simply a regrouping move trying to get these pieces again glued together uh, being compact uh, you have we want to have of course your knight in front of the king you saw how this knight is a good defensive piece when the queen comes into the game in the game uh, queen to g5 was played and now uh, rook to g8 the challenging uh, gear gives queen and uh, bishop to g6 was played a counter attack king to f8 and now uh, knight to d6 a very nice move by georgiev of course you cannot take uh, the knight because you get queen to f6 and you get checkmated uh, so that's why uh, rook to h5 was played by uh, by kasparov and there are now several choices uh, here for uh, for georgiev and uh, here was i think the critical moment or the cr uh, main mistake that georgiev has made uh let's for instance see possible continuations first after bishop takes h5 uh, rook takes g5 can be played here rook takes g5 and here after bishop takes d6 uh i think black has a better game uh, because uh, you have two pieces for the rook that's a better position you could attack here this weak pawns uh everything is again compact here for black so this is not a good choice here for white you could uh, in the game a queen to g2 was played by georgiev which as i said was a mistake the better idea is here to play queen to e3 and this queen to e3 leads basically into a um, drawish line i think uh, there are now several choices if you try rook to rook to g6 then uh, rook takes g6 can be played and after uh, rook king to, uh, rook to h1 uh, black uh, white can try king to d2 but now uh, knight to d5 is the possibility you cannot take the pawn on e5 because you get the fork so basically queen to e4 four is the main idea but now uh, black can only hope here for perpetual checks after king to d1 again uh, some perpetual check possibility so this wasn't played in the game as i said um 
uh, here in this particular game uh, uh, queen to g2 was played and uh, here Gergiev made the mistake because he stayed with his queen on the g-file and Gary Kasparov used this moment immediately he, he played bishop takes d6 now finally because uh, here uh, uh, f4 uh, is the possibility of course uh, to somehow try to open the position but here you see if you for instance take bishop takes h5 of course uh, you lose the queen again with the same position again you have uh, two pieces uh, for the rook so um i'm not sure why gergiev played this move queen to g2 staying on the g file uh, he tried now as i said the move f4 but it's not a problem here uh gary kasparov simply closed the center with the move e4 here we have uh, king to c1 and now uh, rook to h6 attacking this weak bishop uh, that's why f5 has to be played but now knight takes f5 here we have queen to f2 uh, knight take, uh, rook takes g6 we have rook takes g6 rook takes g6 and now queen takes f5 <coughs> not a problem because here uh, king to f7 uh, can be played and you see now everything is uh, protected uh, this pawn on uh, e4 is also protected you cannot check uh, creating uh, you cannot create perpetual checks here anymore uh, here um, uh, queen to f2 was played uh, trying maybe some checks on the on on the seventh rank but not a problem here gary kasparov simply proceed with queen to, uh, king to e6 here we have queen to b6 now uh, rook to um, g5 okay here uh, Gergiev took but now we can simply continue to push this pawn this is now main advantage here the pass pawn that uh, Gary Kasparov has created we have uh, king to d1 uh, now rook to uh, e5 very important move getting this rook behind this pawn now this is really a serious threat now but Gergiev tried okay uh, queen to c8 another problem uh, now several checks were played here after queen to uh, g4 here uh, uh, b4 also very important move uh, not allowing here um, Gergiev to create also some pass pawn situations uh, queen to c4 uh, again king to d8 uh, king to e7 again you see um uh, Gergiev can only hope here for draw if um, Kasparov makes a mistake if he goes on a weird square I don't know maybe in in the corner and then uh, Gergiev could have played some perpetual checks but here after queen to h4 here Gary Kasparov simply goes on 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 the queen side with uh, king to c8 again another check is possible but not a problem here uh, we have rook to uh, e6 again everything is uh, protected after king queen to, uh, queen to g7 we have again king to c6 we have uh, queen to uh, g2 and now king to king to c5 no checks are possible anymore so that's why queen to g5 and here uh, Gergiev played uh, uh, pardon me Kasparov played uh, rook to g6 a very tricky move uh, of course you cannot take because you get the fork on on f4 uh, queen to d8 was played and now finally rook to g2 uh, basically in this position it's game over because now uh, this pawn will get uh, on the second rank but uh, after king to d3 we have uh, rook to uh, d2 you have only one square king to e4 and now uh, e2 okay again uh, Gergiev played some checks we have king to c6 uh, but Gary Kasparov can escape from this position because he played uh, bishop to c7 and now again no more checks are possible so that's why here queen to h4 now knight to f4 again um, preparing here this uh, very annoying move knight to g2 and then uh, e e1 promotion so in the game queen to e1 was played but now uh, knight to g2 anyway and um, in this position Gergiev resigned so great great game i think by gary uh, with this queen sacrifice uh, you see gergiev also prepared some great tactics against uh, gary kasparov but uh, the legendary gary likes this types of position likes to go into tactical battles and here gergiev got punished for not cal calculating everything good i think uh, he should have gone into this line uh, with this potential uh, g6 move uh, splitting the pawns in front of uh, in front of uh, gary kasparov's king but okay uh, still uh, this was uh, really one of the best queen sacrifices i think uh, especially by gary kasparov who uh, likes really to 
challenge you to play this types of variation he doesn't play this berlin uh, defense so he doesn't play this uh complicated positional lines he goes into straightforward lines and that's why we love him we love his games and we i really um think that he was really one of the best chess players in history even maybe he was even the best i think okay Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, meanwhile, you can follow my other best chess games of all times from the series. Here is the link. And you can also watch my commented chess games played by computers with some Lila C0, Alpha Zero, uh, Stockfish games and many, many more. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching, guys. And chess is the best, of course.